Hi, how are you? It's Travis in here, and welcome back to our adventures in Azeroth. Last episode, we did some fishing in Milwaukee Harbor, and we also finished our quest there as well. And today we are in Agmar's Hammer. We are going to be turning a quest in here to the image of the Archmage Aethys Sunreaver. The Eternal Sun guides yes, us. Yes, what is it? Your presence is required at Agmar's Hammer. Keep your wits about you. What took you so long? Time waits only for aspects, Undead. We have much work to do, you and I. The reckoning is the Moonrest Guardians to the southwest were the final resting place of a group of highborn elves. It was also a ley line nexus. The Blue Dragonflight used a magical device they call a surge needle to destroy that nexus, freeing the power to redirect at their will. I want more information, and you are going to get it for me. After the land was destroyed at the ruins, the ghost of the highborn rose up and decimated half of the mage hunters there. Go rifle their courses, their corpses for clues. Remember the sun well. Attunement to Dalaran. We will have justice. Hello, mage. By now, you must be wondering where Dalaran is and how to get there. I can help you with this if you can survive a simple test. Before I teach you how to teleport to our great city, you must attune yourself to the ley lines of Northern. Otherwise, you will destroy yourself in the process. Take this attunement crystal and use it in the pit under the surge needle at the moonrest gardens to the southwest then you will be ready to learn what i have to teach farewell oh great that's interesting maybe we'll do that we eventually have to go to dalaran anyways right and i actually want to learn teleport to dalaran that would be good it would almost kind of be like having an extra hearthstone, almost. Speaking of hearths, there should be... Anaria Shola. Loktar. There should be an innkeeper here. Usually right here. I wonder why we can't see him. Maybe he'll show up after. That's kind of weird. All right, so let's make our way over here, and we will check out the Moonrest Garden plants, and we will get attuned to the ley lines of Northrend. What are we going to attack by? A Dragonbone Condor. <laughs> and I recently went on to Classic Era, guys, just to check it out. I've heard a lot of good things about the white main server and my warrior is currently on that server because I decided to transfer him to white main because the server I was on Fairlina barely had anybody on it and supposedly white main had you know something going on there and I logged in today and it was packed really nice to see there was a bunch of uh, buffs going off. Oni head was up. Neth head. A rend dropped. Pretty awesome, man. It kind of reminded me of, you know, 2020 again. Oh, Moonrest Garden Plants might get these here. What the heck? I clicked open. Mage Hunter personal effects. Let's see what this Mage Hunter had on them. There we go. We got the Leyline Attunement Crystal. We need to do that at the pit. Over here, I think. It's just over here, the pit. Oh, we seem to be pulling a couple of things. There's like this big thing called Arcan Arcanimus. There's dragon aspects, Nexus Guardians flying ab above us. I think they're elites too. Oh, couldn't use Nova on this guy. 
I could use Nova on him though. I might just just gonna get a little rough here. All right, we got him down. Yeah, Classic Era is alive and well. It's really cool. I was, it made me want to like go back and play my Warrior a little bit. Looking at all my old loot. And I'm happy I paid the five bucks. Even though it's kind of messed up that we had to do that. To keep the character. But I'm happy I did it because it, it did feel nice knowing that I can, you know, go back to Classic with my old Warrior again and kind of relive that experience. I'm thinking about maybe doing some PvP on him. I don't know if I'll do any raids, but who knows? What the heck happened? Like, you're not gonna give me, like, a second to, like... <laughs> this thing just spawns like, in under a minute. And I'm gonna die, maybe. I gotta use, like, no. I'm dead. I'm not pissed. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> that sucks. That's so weird. I honestly felt like we were safe, and then it's just like, oh, everything spawned back again. <laughs> that was so messed up. <laughs> I don't know. That was that was kind of weird. Usually they give you like a minute. I didn't even get like a minute there. And they all spawned back. Like, even those, like, other highborns or, like, drained highborns, they came back as well. I should have just ice blocked. I don't know what we could have done. Thing is, like, I can't Nova that thing. For some reason, it doesn't, like, can't get affected by Nova. It's kind of an. Oh, man. So, where are we going to spawn here? This is our closest spot. I hate that thing. <laughs> Shouldn't have died to that. Okay, here we go again. Round two. So we better get going here before he spawns again. Gotta be in the center of the pit. It's a long cast. Alright, nice. We got it. Let's get out of here. Got these, like... Surge Needle Sorcerers. I wonder if they were like former Dalaran mages. But yeah, maybe I'll play, uh, get some BGs on the Warrior in the future. Maybe we'll get some old classic raids one day. That would be kind of fun to do. Because my Warrior has the gear for it. He has like full Nax gear. So we can do pretty much any raid. The only thing is my character's kind of broke. We only got like 180 gold. But we do have uh, 10 Elementium bars that I was saving for my, uh, my Thunder Fury. I probably won't sell those, but those are worth a decent amount of coin in Classic WoW. I would assume at least 10,000 gold. Probably, may maybe more. Depending on, depending on, like, you know, the inventory that the server has. But I'll probably save those. Who knows, maybe one day I'll want to, uh... Go back and, you know, join a guild, maybe farm some Molten Core. Cross my fingers and hope I get the... The Baron Geddon Binding, because I only need one more binding and then I can get Thunder Fury. Something I was never able to get. 
think I've told this story many times on the channel, but I, uh, I farmed Thunder Fury for over a year and a half every single week, and uh, Berengeddon binding never dropped once. I was in line to get it every single week. So pretty much our guild cleared all of the raids without having a tank with Thunder Fury. Which is, which is kind of rough. Like I had to like try to de like pull as much threat as I could without the best threat or tank, you know, weapon in the game. And Thunder Fury was considered or is pretty much the the best threat generating weapon in Classic WoW. That's why every tank wanted it. It was rough. <laughs> it was, it, it, it was, it, I felt really unlucky. But, whatever. It is what it is, maybe it wasn't meant to be. Or maybe we'll just uh, eventually get it in Classic Era, who knows. That'd be awesome. It's really rare though, it's like under 3% chance, I think, for it to drop. All right, so we're looking for the Moonrest Garden plans. Believe they are on these dead mage hunters. Let's see if uh, we can find these here. Not just some, just some robes. I think we can dismiss our pet, so we can fly around and try to find these guys without pulling a bunch of mobs. More torn ropes. Yeah, WoW's in a great spot. There's literally three games you can play. Like, how awesome is that? Want to play Classic WoW? There's people playing. You want to play Wrath, the Lich King? There's people playing. <laughs> it's pretty good. You want to play, you know, Retail, Dragonflight, which is considered a pretty damn good expansion? There's people playing. WoW's in a really good spot. It's probably like the best spot, wow, spot WoW's been in. In years. I can't wait till hardcore servers come out. That's like the number one thing I'm looking forward to in this game. Probably said that like a million times. <laughs> Finally, we got the plans, man. Goromash, I am sending a representative of the Ethereum to you. Ambassador Adu Duyin tells me that there are more of his kind who would like to join the cause. Feel, f feel him out. See if you can find a use for him. If he proves helpful, I may consider accepting more of his kind into the fold. Don't be an idiot. Burn this letter once you've read it. M. All right, so let's bring this stuff back. It's funny how it's called, uh, he's a representative of Ethereum. That's, uh, the name of a cryptocurrency, if you guys don't follow, you know, crypto. And supposedly the creator of Ethereum, Vitalik Buterin, or one of the creators. So he's, I think he's known as the creator of Ethereum, or the head of Ethereum. He, uh, he actually played World of Warcraft, which was cool. He played back in TBC, and supposedly um, he quit the game because uh, Warlocks got nerfed. I never played Warlocks, so like I don't really know what got nerfed, but they did some of the Warlocks, and he didn't like it, so he stopped playing, and he, he got into crypto. <laughs> 
And I guess uh, he got the name Ethereum, probably maybe from the game. Who knows? State your business, Shoreloran. You have returned. What did you uncover? Remember the sun Curious. Well. They seek an accord with the Ethereum. The Ethereals could prove a powerful ally for Malagos and his madness. This will not do. Keep your wits about you. We need to kill two birds with one stone here, Mage. You're the stone. Our two birds are Wind Trader Mufa and Goramash. They should be somewhere in the western half of the Moonrest Gardens. Most likely, they are in the larger two-story building overlooking the pit. I require proof of their demise, if you would be so kind. Farewell. Glory to the Sindori. Okay. I wonder if those guys the are elites. Is at hand. Very well. If you think you are ready, then let's not waste any more time. Teleport Dalaran. We will have justice. There we go, guys. We got Teleport Dalaran. You damn right. It's good. We can go to Dal whenever we want now. That's a, what's one cool thing about being a mage, guys? Being able to teleport to Dalaran whenever you want. Problem is, we don't have any uh, reagents to do that right now. But yeah, let's see if we can do this quest. This could be tough, though. Wind Trader Mufa might be kind of rough. And where's the other guy? Are they both here? Scales of Goromash. We'll go check it out. See if we can do it. So that's how you learn Teleport Dalaran. I never knew that. You have to come here to Eggmar's Hammer. And Diablo recently uh, came out with their... You know, uh, they described what the end game is going to be like. I'll be honest, I, I was a little disappointed. I, I was kind of hoping. I don't know what like nightmare dungeons are going to be, but um, I hope they're not worse than Greater Rifts. Because if they are, that's kind of that's going to be kind of sad. They sound like they're going to be like Greater Rifts. Like there's going to be affixes. You know, there's going to be. They should be challenging. But I don't know if they they get harder and harder and harder as you uh, you know. I I don't know if you can level them up in any way. But one good thing is there's 120 dungeons, so there's a lot. Of, that's a lot of content right there in itself. So those are a lot of dungeons that you can turn into nightmare dungeons. So. That should take up a, a decent amount of players' time. And there's one thing I didn't really look into, but um, there was a... Uh, what's going on here? You are nothing but an underling. I will not wait a moment longer. Escort me to Goromash immediately. Goromash is busy with that ritual right now. It's probably like our best bet at killing him. What's this? More delays? Gotta love patrols. That'll finish him off. Yeah, I'm hoping they kind of have something like Greater Rifts. It was my favorite thing in Diablo 3. And the Paragon system, it looked cool. I thought it was a lot better than Diablo 3's. But supposedly, it's pretty basic. Like, you just get, like, plus 5 of, like, a stat for most of it. For most of the, the notes. I didn't notice that. So it's kind of like the old system, because really all you would do with the old system, you, you kind of just, like, you'd buff up, like, your, the amount of gold you would get. You could also buff up XP, but mostly people would buff up, you know, their dexterity or their, like, the main stat that they would want. So I assume Paragon's going to be, like, a lot like that in Diablo 4. You're most likely going to go for the nodes that buff the stat that you, that you want to upgrade, right? 
There's also abilities and like in glyphs. So I think that'll make it more interesting. We'll just have to see. I really don't I don't think we got enough information about the Paragon system to really judge it. And then PvP is it it, it kind of seems like it's just like an area where you can PvP. And uh, you, you, you fight over shards. Which is alright. And the pro I think that's that's not bad. It's just, uh, I hope the, the rewards aren't just, you know, cosmetics. And there was no game modes talked about. There was no, like, hey, guys, we got arenas. Or we got these, like, fun battlegrounds you can play with your friends and fight against other people and stuff. We didn't do that. This guy's back again? These guys don't waste any time with, like, making sure NPCs get, you know, rest. I think that was, that was probably over a minute. But we're gonna have to find that other character. I think his name is, uh, yeah, Goromosh. Maybe he's at the top here. There's a Nexus Guardian. You will have a bite to eat. But overall, it looks fun. It's only the first season. Like, I, I'm not expecting much. And they also did say that um, this is just the beginning. They're going to add stuff, obviously. Like, man, if Diablo 3 was like the, the way it was today when it first came out, like, dude, Diablo 3 was terrible. <laughs> it was really bad. So. So there's a lot they're going to do with 4, I think. I'm not too worried about it at all. I think they're going to add some pretty fun stuff to the game. Down the road. I just want to see what players, you know, do with the game, I think. I think they're just interested to see what, what players do with the open world stuff. And their new nightmare dungeons. Seems to be the main focus. And I guess the PvP and the shards, they're probably just interested to see how players interact with the PvP in the game before they decide to, you know, go any further with it. It's pretty much just going to be a fun area for people to just, you know, try out PvP and, like, try to collect, you know, some shards for some cosmetic items and maybe a loot upgrade. But I assume, like, the majority of loot upgrades will most likely be in uh, Nightmare Dungeons. That's just my guess. So if you really want to power up your character, it's probably going to be in Nightmare Dungeons. Or via the, the world quests. But yeah, that's, a, that's enough about Diablo 4. I've <laughs> been thinking about it all day. But yeah, I was worried about, you know, Blizzard. But now, I'm not. I'm not too worried. I think they're going to do all, do just fine. I thought World of Warcraft wasn't going to be in a rough spot. Seems like Dragon's Flight is good. Classic Era is doing well. It, it honestly doesn't even matter if they have, like, what they do with Wrath of the Lich King after. <laughs> it, it, it really doesn't. They could just keep doing Classic Era and... Uh, and, you know, and Dragonflight and just be fine. Maybe they'll do, like, Wrath Era. Who knows? Because I was worried. I was like, once Wrath of Lich King's done, is this game, is this just going to be over? And it seems like it's not. It seems like people are going to want to play Classic. So that's cool. And then I thought, like, since, you know, Diablo 2 resurrected and they did all the remakes, like Warcraft 3 remake... Starcraft had a remake as well. 
So they were running out of remakes. So they they needed to, you know, do well with some new with, with new titles and and hopefully Diablo 4 will be good. One thing I know is that it'll be better than 3 was at launch. It, it has to be. I don't know if you guys remember, but 3 was a mess. There was no greater rifts. People were just doing the campaign, like, running around, trying to find chests to get, like, legendary drops. People were selling um, gear on the, the auction house that they had, the real money auction house. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it was just... It was the dumb. It was dumb. They they fixed that game up quite like they did a good job fixing that game up because it was it was pretty brutal to start. The campaign was fun though. I enjoyed the campaign. The dark time. But after that, pass. I kind of just stopped playing, and then I came back when they started adding stuff to the game. The reckoning Have you prevented the accord between the Blue Dragonflight and the Ethereum? Well, the Ethereum sounds pretty serious. Remember the sun well. That's all right, Mitch. Just put them down on the ground there in front of Agmar's throne. You can practically sense the smile hidden behind the Archmage's helm. Unfortunate that Gramash indicated that the accord had already been reached. Nonetheless, that's two less worms we'll have to worry about. Let us get on to more important business. Okay, that's a nice helmet. It's good because this fisherman's ear warmer. We will it's, have a, it's by far one of the ugliest helmets I've ever seen. So let's see what this one looks like. They just love these like helmets. <laughs> it's like a. It's like a, something they put on your head to, like, punish you. <laughs> That's what it looks like. I think we also picked up a quest here. It's odd-looking and definitely magical. Gormash's strange device. Picking up this strange device, you are certain that it is magical in nature. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to connote any other kind of use. Perhaps the Archmage back at Aegmar's Hammer to the northeast of the Moonrest Gardens would be able to tell what it's used for. All right, so yeah, let's, let's deliver this, and we'll pick up this uh, light point here. Our enemies will fall. What do you have there, Chorellaron? Crab Ice, I'm not. If I'm not mistaken, you've uncovered the key to allow us to discern exactly what the Mage Hunter forces are up to. Farewell. The teleportation device. If I had to guess. I'd say it leads to the Surge Needle platform floating above the Moonrest Gardens to the southwest. Travis, I need you to use the. I need it to. I need you to use it to investigate what's up there. It appears the device works both ways, and you shouldn't have to jump off. I expect that once you teleport up to the top of the Surge Needle, there will be some sort of apparatus on it to observe. You should be able to use the teleporter from anywhere within the gardens. Keep your wits about you. All right, we'll check this out. And look at that. There he is. So, so. About damn time we found you. Seeing keeper. And I plan on doing all the quests here in Eggmar's Hammer. Right now we are focusing on... Uh, the blue dragon flight here. And their dealings with the Ethereum. Or the Ethereals. I guess that's why they call themselves the Ethereum. They are the Ethereals, right? That, that are a part of the Ethereum. And I think they were also in uh, Outland as well. I think we worked with them in Auchindune or something like that. I know there were there were Ethereals there. I don't know if they were part of uh, the Ethereum though. Mm -hmm. 
talk to that guy later. Let's see what's going on at the top of this needle here. Should we teleport up to it? We got flying. It's like literally no point for us to teleport. We, we're at the surge needle. So what do we gotta do? Activate anywhere within Moonrest cards to teleport to the Surge Needle. If you are already atop the Surge Needle, use it to teleport back down. It's kind of weird. I, I don't... I don't know what the heck. Some serious damage. Can we, like, land? Can I get off my mount? Can I attack them? <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. He can't attack us. Can we jump down? He's just wrecking us. This might be a bad idea. Yeah, it was a terrible idea. Here, let's just use the surge needle. I think you just should, we should just use it to go back up and down. Okay, this is better. And he wants us to... Object on the surge needle observed. So we just need to observe the object that they are... Uh, Powering. Dead. Guess we've observed it. Now we can go back. It's kind of weird. I th you think we'd have to like fight everything here and it would be cool to fight Malagos. I might do that. I'll try to do that on my druid. Never done that raid before. Anubilore Delana. What you're describing, that's a projection of the Arach Arc Arcanomicron. The Arc Maid shows show of concern is quickly massed behind an impassive countenance. The Arcon Arcon Arcanomicron is a map of all the magical ley line intersections in the world. The Blue Dragonflight has been using it to find and destroy Leyline Anchors to send the magical power back to the Nexus. The question is why is the path of destruction leading east? It should be heading west instead. Farewell. The Mage Hunter forces are active on the glittering strand to the south of Moonrest Gardens. My guess is that you'll find a heavily guarded focus on the beach and a captain who's in charge of it. No doubt the captain of the force down there will have some sort of controlling device on their person. Get the controller and use it on the focus. With any skill on your part, we'll be able to get some more information about what they're really up to out there. All right. So the that. reckoning is at hand. And I think we will uh, we'll do that quest next episode. We'll go back down to Star's Rest and see what's going on here with the blue dragon flight. But as always, thanks for watching. Keep your heads up. Later.